Um, let me ask another ridiculous question on, on this topic. Um, how important is touch? We haven't talked much about humans, but uh, I have this argument with my dad <laughs> where like, I think you can fall in love with a robot based on uh, language alone. And he believes that touch is essential. I touch and smell, he says, but um, so in terms of robots, you know, connecting with humans, you know, on a, we can go philosophical in terms of like a deep, meaningful connection, like love, but even just like collaborating in an interesting way, how important is touch? Like how, uh, from an engineering perspective and a philosophical one. I think it's super important. Let's even just in a practical sense, if we forget about the emotional part of it, um, but for robots to interact safely while they're doing meaningful mechanical work in the pro in the uh, you know close contact with or vicinity of people that need help, I think we have to have them. They have we have to build them differently. Um, they have to be afraid, not afraid of touching the world. So. Uh, I think Baymax is just awesome. That's just the, like the, the 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 movie of Big Hero Six and the the concept of Baymax. That's just awesome. I think we should, um, and we have some folks at, at Toyota that are trying to Toyota Research that are trying to build Baymax roughly, and uh, uh, I think it's a, just a fantastically good project. Um, I think it will change the way people physically interact. The same way, I mean, you you gave a couple examples earlier, but but if I um, if the robot that was walking around my home looked more like a teddy bear and a little less like the Terminator, that could change completely the way people perceive it and interact with it. And maybe they'll even want to teach it, like you said, right? You could um, not quite gamify it, but somehow instead of people judging it and looking at it as if uh, it's not doing as well as a human, they're going to try to help out the cute teddy bear, right? Who knows? But I... I think we're building robots wrong and being more soft and more contact is important, right? Yeah, I mean, uh, like all the magical moments I can remember with robots. Uh, well, first of all, just uh, visiting your lab and seeing Atlas, uh, but also Spot Mini. When I first spot, saw Spot Mini in person and hung out with him, her, uh, it, I don't have trouble in gendering robots. I feel robotics people really say, always say it. I kind of like the idea that it's a her or a him. Uh, there's a magical moment, but there's no touching. Uh, I guess the question I have, have you ever been um, like, have you had a human robot experience where you, like a robot touched you? <laughs> and like, it was like, wait, like was there a moment that you've forgotten that a robot is a robot? And like the anthropomorphization stepped in and for a second you forgot that it's not human? I mean, I think when you're in on the details, then we, we of course anthropomorphized our work with Atlas, but in, you know, in verbal communication and the like, I think we were pretty aware of it as a machine that needed to be respected. <laughs> um, I actually, I worry more about the smaller robots that could still, you know, move quickly if programmed wrong. And, uh, and we have to be careful actually about safety and the like right now. And that if we build our robots correctly, I think then those, a lot of those concerns could go away. And we're seeing that trend. We're seeing the lower cost, lighter weight arms now that could be fundamentally safe. Um, I mean, I, I do think touch is so fundamental. I, Ted Adelson is uh, is great. He's a perceptual scientist at MIT. Uh, and he studied vision most of his life. And he said, uh, when I had kids, I expected to be fascinated by their perceptual development. But what really, what he noticed was felt more impressive, more dominant was the way that they would touch everything and lick everything and pick things up, <laughs> stick it on their tongue and whatever. Yeah. And he said, um, watching his daughter uh, convinced him that actually he, he needed to study tactile sensing more. So there's something very um, important. I think it's, it's a little bit also of the passive versus active uh, part of the world, right? You can passively perceive the world 
Um, but it's fundamentally different if you can do an experiment, right? <laughs> and if you can change the world and you can learn a lot more than a passive observer. So you can, in dialogue, you, that was your initial example, you mm -hmm. could have an active experiment exchange. But I think if you're just a camera watching YouTube, I think that's a very different problem than if you're a robot that can apply force and touch. I, I, I think it's important. Yeah, I think it's just an exciting area of research. I think you're probably right that this hasn't been under-researched. It's, uh, to me, as a person who's captivated by the idea of human-robot interaction, it feels like um, such a rich opportunity to explore touch. Not even from a safety perspective, but like you said, the emotional too. I mean, safety comes first, uh, but the next step is like, you know, uh, like a real human connection, even in the world, like even in the industrial setting, it just feels like uh, it's nice for the robot. I don't know. I, I you know, you you might disagree with this, but because um, I think it's important to see robots as tools often. Right. But I don't know. I think they're just always going to be more effective once you humanize them. Uh, like. It's convenient now to think of them as tools because we want to focus on the safety, but I think ultimately to create like a good experience for the worker, for the person, there has to be a human element. I don't know, for me, I, I it feels like, like an industrial robotic arm would be better if it has a human element. I think like Rethink Robotics had that idea with, with Baxter and having eyes and so on, having yep. I don't know. I'm a big believer in that. I, 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 it's not my area, but I am also a big believer. Do you have an emotional connection to Atlas? <laughs> like, yeah, do you miss him? I, I mean, um, <laughs> yes. I, I, I don't know if I, more so than if I had a different science project that I'd worked on super wow. hard, right? I, but, uh, um, yeah, I mean the 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 robot. We basically had to do heart surgery on the robot in the final competition because we melted the core. Um, and, uh, and yeah, there was something about watching that robot hanging there. We know we had to compete with it in an hour, and it was getting its guts ripped out. Um, those, those are all historic moments. I think if we look back like hundred years from now, um, yeah, I think those are important moments in robotics. I mean, these are the early days. You look at like the early days of a lot of scientific disciplines. They look ridiculous. They're full of failure. But it feels like robotics will be important I think in, so. in the coming uh, hundred years. I think so. And these are the early days. So 